Hello there, YouTube. This is Zootechner Steve. Welcome you back to a, another Let's Play. Uh, we're going to be playing Planet Zoo once again, uh, but this time something a little bit different is going on. Instead of doing the uh, sort of challenge mode zoo where we're just kind of building our own, we're going to open up our first franchise zoo, which is going to allow us to uh, be online and trade with other uh, people playing Planet Zoo. And so we're going to have an interactive community now. I think I've learned enough playing the basic game that I can do this pretty confidently. Um, what do I want to call this? Uh, well, let's go with something sort of generic. Uh, how about... Wanna dance? Yeah, that more or less works, right? Fauna Gardens, that's animal plants, right? I think that works. Yeah, it's a decent gun. Decent pun. So we're going to call it Fauna Gardens. No, animal plants. I'm ready. Uh, let's go ahead and pick a place. Oh, yay! We've uh, earned rewards for creating a new one. Uh, new zoo. Yay! Uh, let's go ahead and select the biome for it. Um, we did a temperate one. Let's go ahead. Tundra is probably... I don't want to have to do too much terraforming. Let's go ahead and go with grassland. Uh, we'll put it... Yeah, we might even to throw it in Europe did the last one in North America, so I didn't want to do that again. Uh, we'll keep the difficulty at medium. Uh, okay, so Fauna Gardens is our franchise, and this one will be called... Um, uh, let's call this one... Uh, Ty Tycooner Zoo. Right? That, that's fun with me. Okay, we'll go ahead and create Tycooner Zoo. Ah, achievement unlocked. That's right. Soon we will be the king of steam. Okay, so here we are at the very beginning of our zoo. I'm going to go ahead and pause the game so we're not losing any time here. Uh, grassland biome looks pretty good. Uh, it's medium, so we've got plenty of space here. Let's focus on our entrance, obviously. What to do? Uh, zoom in here. So the first thing I think what I want to do... Oh, I kind of like that path. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and flatten out this terrain. Make sure that we're not uh, causing any issues here. Flatten the foundation. Uh, looks like this is pretty flat to begin with, but we don't want to mess it up. Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build like a little area for our guests with a uh, drink, soda, an information booth somewhere out here. We're just going to put the real basic buildings. We're going to build cheap to start with and then fancy them up later. We're going to put a big exhibit kind of out here that the path can go around and sort of like a like a smiley face. Like the smile on a smiley face. And then behind that exhibit, we're going to put in the things that our zookeepers need, the veterinary station and all that. So it'll be hidden from guests and hopefully we can build a couple different exhibits around it. Uh, so first thing we're going to do I'm going to take a look at what animals we have available, and we'll see what animals can bring in the most money, because we do need money in the zoo, so... It doesn't look like we have any animals available quite yet. Uh, let's see if we can pause it. Uh, looks like it's not even giving us that option yet, so I'm not even going to worry about that right now. What is this? Uh, guest number 300 guests. Not worried about that right now. First thing we're going to do, let's go ahead then and just start up uh, our construction. Grab my pass tool here. And I'm actually going to delete this path. Because it's got kind of that split there. So, what I'm going to do, I like the path they're using here. This uh, rustic path, I think, is what it is. I'm going to put it on a grid here. Stop deleting. Rustic path. Select the grid. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's because it's so big. Okay, so 
like a grid. There we go. I'm like a grid. Get a grid from there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight-ish, I think. I think that's right. And they can still give us enough room at least. I do like this rustic path. Why didn't I notice that in the uh, other game? Maybe I hadn't unlocked it yet. Uh, whoop! Almost. Grid. So, grid view. Boom. Okay, perfect. Alright, so like I said, we're gonna go ahead and just put bathrooms, like a little area around here, and then round the corners off, I think. Yeah, I think that's how it'll work it. Uh, do I want to use the same pass for that? Is the question I have. I think so, since it's the start area. Um, the grid, select the grid from you. Select this grid, then start it there, I think. One, two, three. One, two. Just kind of make a little courtyard area here. And we can fancy this up later. Uh, I want to make this wide. So I made it uh, four. It needs to be about 12. No, not length. Width. Width. I need it 12 meters. If I did the math right in my head, oh, I can only make it 10 meters wide. Oh, well. that and we'll just go ahead and make it a 10 width or we can make it an 8 width make it fit that paths in these games no fun all right we'll just make it an 8 width then to save my sanity all right select this grid and yeah, do and then I want ten to eight meters. We should be able to just snap it to the end here and try to get this as straight as possible, like so. And boom. And there, now we gotta round it into the path like I was trying for. Hooray! See I did learn some things. Okay. Let's go ahead and open up facilities. Like I said, I'm gonna get the very simple things. I'm not even gonna put the uh, the ones that have the Know, we can snap this to the grid, right? I guess I don't have to. Uh, or I'm going to put the ones that uh, have the pre-made things around them. We're just going to put a couple of these guys down. The pre-made uh, outside fabs around them is what I'm trying to say there. Uh, Looney balloons. No, I want the drinks. There's a gulpy soda. That's what we're looking for. Uh, gulpy soda there. Uh, one space in between. Go ahead and grab a small bathroom should be in here somewhere. Guest facilities. That's going to make it easier to find. Small toilet lock. Just rotate it around so it's facing the other way. Like so. And I'll grab an ATM. I can put there. And in that area that's a little dent off is where we're going to put a couple of benches down for people to sit on. Rotate these a little bit. Just to make it look a little more interesting with them rotated. And we need trash. And recycle on both sides. Just to help out our maintenance workers. Alright, so we've got a little area just based for them. Now, like I said, what we're going to do here is kind of put a smile and then build an exhibit sort of around that. So how are we going to do the smile, I think? Um, first thing, I'm going to grab this path. And again, we'll line the grid using this grid. Three, four, two, three, four. Great. I deselect the grid. Uh, make sure the width is still eight meters. And I want the angle to snap at 15 degrees. And the length to be as long as it can be. Five. Okay. And just to make sure that this lines up right, we're going to use a T junction when joining the path. That uh, could be a little more of a severe angle than 15 degrees. A little. Let's do 23. Yeah, that looks about right. So 23 degrees.
Come on. You think, boy, like you were on this side? on the other side. Of course, when that snapped in, I was at 15 degrees. Let's set it to the exact same settings, just to make sure. In my head, it works so well. Um, okay, let's try this then. I'm going to take you off. What we could probably do since we have the grid. Oh, might be too severe then. Oh, it's because I changed degrees. Undo. Here's what we're gonna do because we have the grid set 23 degrees. This is never gonna work in a million years. Yeah, I was gonna say it's coming in way too shallow. Somewhere I messed up the pathway. That's what made it work on the last one. Grr, arg. Okay, I'm gonna learn it real quick and then I'm gonna report back. One second. Okay, sorry for that quick cut, but it was just a uh, it was just a matter of getting it exactly lined up with the left and the right. Um, so I'll show you an example of that real quick so you can understand what's going on. See, I've got them almost connected. Um, what you have to do is just make sure, whoops, I'll even go back one more. Make sure with the left and the right, that you are exactly lined up so that it's all blue and then it'll let you just extend off of it so that's all it was just have to be very precise with it um but anyway we've got that basic uh build in uh obviously we're gonna decorate this area a little bit more build that out as our first exhibit and i think i'm actually gonna widen this path a little bit too uh in fact here's what i'm gonna do in order to bring them out a little bit more Let's go ahead and grab a uh, four meter path. And this is just a little extra. Just to... Ooh. I actually kind of like that a little bit more now that I'm looking at it. Um, is it better if we widen this a little bit maybe? Nope. No, it's not. That lets me put in some like trees and flowers and stuff. Okay, I'm gonna make that little bit of alteration there. Just doing a little bit of, ooh, of uh, spicing up here at the front. I have to move the bathroom, but that's okay. put it then. We can just put it here. I think that'll work. Use the group six. We'll just put that in between the two stations. Okay, back to our paths. And I've kind of janked it up already. But we can get this fixed. Fortunately, it's just the ones on the grid, so it's going to be easy for us to fix here. Find the grid. Oh, not delete. Select. Oh, no. Find the grid. Select this grid. Boop. Oh, Boop. Oh. Now we'll have to get that fixed. In fact, it might be easier if we put it on this grid. Oh. Mm. Boy, the paths in this game are just 
very unforgiving. Other than that, really good. I think it's back because the terrain. The terrain, actually, I think part of the problem we were having before, too, is that when you put in pathways, it, like, lifts the terrain a little bit. And so when you go to back to try to edit it, the hitboxes are a little bit off because it knows the pathways are a little bit off. So let's see if that... Let's see if my uh, hypothesis is correct. And that's why these are not lining up exactly where we want them to. Nope, it's still giving me that little gap between the two. So we'll just delete the parts that we don't want and then go in and refresh a new one. Which should match up perfectly. Exactly. Deselect. Width again. And we should be able to straight and connect it. Boom! Just like that. Uh, no, this probably is not going to let me have this neat little path here because it's going to interfere with that. So we'll have to make a slight change to our widening idea. Uh, we'll just move that up there. In fact, we'll just get rid of this for now. Select. I'm getting to the point where it's not that I don't make mistakes, but when I make them, I kind of figure out how to correct them. So that's marked improvement. Uh, holy crap, it's already been 17 minutes into this. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pick an animal, uh, start building the animal display. I'll do that fast so this uh, video doesn't take forever, and then I'll put in the uh, zookeeper areas behind it like we talked about earlier. So let's go ahead and see what animals we have available, if any now. Uh, not yet. Though... Species. Okay, we'll have to go ahead and actually start playing and get it online here. So, another quick pause, and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so we're going to get these. Uh, we're going to need an animal now. Let's see what we've got of him. So, before we move the animals, obviously, we're going to have to put in the treatment center. So, real quick, even though I don't have a final place for it. Spot just to make it available. And like I said, we'll move this once we determine what animal we're going to get. But that's built now, so there should be animals showing up. Indeed, we've got a couple of things going on. We got a lot of art parks. Not probably what we're going to do here. African buffalo. Um, let's do it this way. Let's go ahead and sort it by appeal. Uh, appeal is what our guests would like to see. Um, Animal appeal. Yeah, okay. And we'll want like a midway one. So we'll filter out the ones that people don't really want to see yet. African elephants, I don't want to do those in the front. Bengal tigers, probably too strong or too big. Lots of bangles. Well, they're pretty popular. So many bangles. Okay, let's go ahead and just do a species filter. Uh, what do we got? Aardvarks, African buffalo, African elephant, wild dogs, bison, bacterial, Borneo cheetah, common ostrich. There's something that lights me up. It's going to be a front, so I don't want too large a species, I don't want too small a species. I'm kind of a medium. Still gonna be working on that zoo. I'm not giving up on it. I just wanted to start with here. Nile monitors are interesting, um, but I did Komodo dragons already, and those feel a little redundant. Um, common warthog. Let's see what we got in the warthog. That feels right. Um, okay, let's get rid of this filter. Anyway. So they're not gonna be that popular, but. But they do look pretty cheap. And that's something we like. Okay, yeah, we can get some common warhawk. Oh, we even like the colors of them. Or those just males and females. Yeah, that's just male and females have different colorations. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's 
not be dumb. I'm gonna look at the zoo PDF about them first. And if they look like the right ones, then I'll build a display about that and put in the exhibit area behind them. So they're under C for common for dogs. Kinda wish they were under W's, but let's take a look. Uh, find some habitat. Male bachelor groups. A group size, one male and up to six females. Okay. Uh, hey. Oh, and they can be interspecies with a lot of things, actually. So that might be good for my list to expand it. Uh, how much room do they need? That's the other thing we really need to look at. Um, 290 meters. Okay, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to make head and make a common warthog exhibit. Yes, that's our plan. We're going to make an exhibit back here. And then put the zookeeper stuff that we need behind them. Okay, that's the plan. I'm going to go ahead and cut here, do the fast things with this... Uh, video doesn't take six hours, and I'll join you on the other side. Okay, so we just did a quick build there. You can see I've put in just a simple outline of the exhibit. Uh, it was just basically a hexagon, and then what I did was I cut in these little viewing areas here. The fence itself, I'll highlight the barrier so you can see what's going on here. Uh, so you can see the fence itself, it just kind of drags along in this cutout area. Uh, this is a 4 meter by 12 meter. The 12 meters is glass. And then I went ahead and built a little uh, viewing area that I could just slot in there. So that's not part of the fence here. Uh, let me get out of the fence. You see, this is its own little thing and we can move it out here if we need to. It's just a 12 by 4. Basically, I put the slots on the bottom. Oops, slots on the top. And then I put a little, like, a uh, couple of logs up front there. So I'm going to deselect that so it goes back in place. And then I just slid that in there so the guests will be able to walk in there. Hopefully, uh, I believe with the game mechanics, they'll just walk in there and look at it. And then on the back side, I've gone ahead and just laid the stretch of uh, Zookeeper Path on the grid. Uh, first thing we're going to want to do, I guess, is... Well, here, let's go ahead and turn on the heat map. And we're going to search for a negative impact on guests. Uh, for those of you who don't know, guests don't like it. Like you can see, there's um, where this uh, animal exchange hutch is. The guests are unhappy. And uh, if they walk in that pathway, they're going to be unhappy. So go ahead and we're going to move this. And I believe I put it far enough that it's not going to impact um, the keepers, so let's, uh, or the uh, warthogs. So we'll go ahead and move this. Uh, we'll put this on the grid. Uh, we'll put it there. So that's the animal exchange. And if I did the heat map right, you can see that it's not going to really affect anything um, as far as our guests. Because our guests, hopefully, will not be going back in this area. So we're going to build up this area back here. And then, like I said, hopefully it's will do multiple exhibits if it's working right in my head. Uh, but we need other facilities here. So we've got the animal exchange. I'm going to put a keeper's hut in this on the same grid here so they're all lined up. Uh, did, did move, select group. There we go. And edit group. Great. And that way we'll have these all guys on the same grid so they line up nice and even. See, I'm kind of learning things here. Uh, so facilities. I'm going to put a uh, keeper hut small on this side. I'm going to put the entrance to that exhibit on that side. Uh, small staff room. And yeah, we're actually going to put this opposite side, I think. That small staff room. Let me put a small... Well, let's put in the vet first, because for some reason I think it looks better with the vet first. So vet quarantine. And then we're going to build, eventually, when we have lots and lots of money to spend. Uh, you can see we're already down to under 20000 so we're not going to be doing too much more. Uh, but when we have lots of money to spend, we're going to be putting in more things here. Um, for now, we'll drop in workshop research center, everything that we kind of need to kind of get the zoo going. Uh, let's go ahead, before I forget, we'll put in a um, door, or a habitat gate. Uh, I don't know exactly where that lines up, so I'm going to drop this. Oh, that's the great we want. One, two, and then we should be able to put in a gate here. It'll match up with that. Just getting it as straight as we can. Boom, like that. Okay. And then we'll wrap around the pathways. 
Uh, I don't know exactly where these pathways are going to go, so I'm just going to extend them there and then make a temporary connection so our uh, zookeepers can get in. Uh, we'll actually need to hire some zookeepers, it now occurs to me. Uh, oh, these guys are facing the wrong way, so let's go ahead and edit that real quick. And we'll just orientate them so that they're facing the front. That way they're all have pathways going to them. I think I did that for those guys. Yes. Okay. So that's just going to be a real simple area. Real basic back there. But it's going to get our job done. Oh, and then those didn't quite connect. Oh, because they have different pathways. Uh, let me fix that then. Uh, darker path. Please. Please. Um, yeah, that's fine. Be able to fix the path. It looks a little funny, but that's fine. Uh... Great. And we'll extend the regular pathways here. Uh, they are eight width, I believe. Yes. And make them real, real short. As straight as we can. And then, like I said, we're just going to have a uh, zookeeper path going off in the moment. future we can change that of course all right so let's go ahead then and we'll unlock it or uh turn on time oh we're gonna have to hire some zookeeper stuff we'll turn on time get our uh, warthogs in and then i will go ahead and design the inside of the exhibit and i'll do that on camera with you okay so we've got our first warthogs deposited into our exhibit one and you can see that they're actually pretty decent. Their welfare is uh, 47 set, about 47% without us even doing anything. Uh, but first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go immediately into our vet research. I hired a vet. We're going to go right ahead and assign them to Warthog so we can start getting enrichment items for them as quickly as possible. And then you can see that their habitat needs a little bit of help too. Now they've got plenty of room, which is what we planned for. You'll remember we saw that they were uh, could cohabitate with a lot of different species, so I built it way bigger than we actually needed for the three warthogs we got. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and uh, we need to get them a shelter, and we need to do a little bit of adjustment here on the terrain. So do that real quick. Um, first, let's grow habitat, hard shelters, and then filter it. Let's make sure it's one that works for our common warthogs. Yeah, there's plenty of them work here. Um, 8 by 4 by 2. What is the difference? This one. They look exactly the same to me. Um, that being said, we'll just go ahead and put one of these guys in the corner for now. That's perfectly fine. And then we're going to want to get them food and water. I'm assuming that they just use a bunch of troughs. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put large food bowls down. In fact, I just change that to two small ones. So can kind of get them to walk throughout the exhibit. And then for water, we're going to actually just build them like a water hole so they can also splash around in it. Because, you know, they are pigs. They're going to want that. Um, let's go ahead and get this habitat changed the way they like it, though. Or short grass to start with. Intensity up, size down. It's got too much long grass currently. Okay. And then we need to really up the soil. So I'm gonna heavy soil and then light soil. Build up too much short grass. Okay. There we go. And we need some coverage for them. They don't need that many. And we're going to have to eventually get enrichment as we put that out. Social wise, they're good. Uh, there's one more that's going to be coming out. Let's go ahead then and just get their 
grasslands and tropical. Herbs from Africa. We'll try to keep it exactly as they live. Uh, biomes. Grassland. And we're going to try to stick with grasslands because that's what our main zoo is anyway. Uh, first thing I want to do is kind of hide the little cut-in areas where the shelters are. Or where those viewing areas, not shelters, are. So we're going to get some tall grass for there. Do I like that look of the elephant grass? Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. And same kind of thing over here. Just so if you're looking through these opening areas, you're not looking directly at the other guest you can view. And I want like one massive tree from the middle. We have like a baobab or an umbrella tree. Those will work. Put that down there. Fun, but not for here. Reeds. Uh, one more like grass. Can we have just like a grass? A bush. Pirate sedge. No, it's be good. Just metals, I guess. Metal small? Small metals? Oh, here's what we can do. We can make this look a little bit more sparse. For me. Get the terrain a little. I'll have to move these trees up a little bit. Oh. Surface. actually not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, let me go ahead and smooth that area in between those two. Okay. And then we can build the rest up with rock and things around it. Um, only thing we'll need to do now is uh, pull some of these trees out of the ground. Because we set them when the floor was on the bottom. Uh, you can stay. You're going to have to come up as well. Okay. I think that's going to be for the basics. And now we'll just put in some rocks and stuff. Um, yeah, it's going to be fine because those are plants are towards the back. Okay, so now it's time to just kind of beautify the area up, drop some deposit box, and then hopefully we can open up the zoo. Fingers crossed.
Okay, welcome back to the other side of the build. You can see that people are in fact using our little viewing areas. We just kind of had to cheat and put a little pathway going underneath them to encourage them to do that, but it's working fine. They're going in, they're loving our warhogs, they're throwing cash in those bins, y'all. All about those green dollars. Or any kind of dollars, I don't know, we're in Europe, so I guess it could be any kind of color money. Uh, but the warhogs are just, you know, we're going to need to get the repair guy to work on this glass. We're going to need better glass than this, this is not holding up well in the sun. But you can see the Warhogs are kind of lounging out like they do. Should have one other Warhog hiding in here somewhere. Uh, the research uh, kicked in, so I was able to get them a log feeder and a hay sniffer. And now they should be completely and totally happy in their environment. And it looks like they are. It looks like their welfare is completely taken care of. Everything's in the mid to high 90s, if not at 100%. So the inspector that arrives in 17 months there should be fine. Uh, and... It looks like we're climbing out. We were below 7,000 at our lowest point. You can see we're above 8,000 now. 
So it looks like we are going to make money. Uh, I did have to put in a uh, information center and a Looney Balloons, um, <laughs> a Looney Balloons uh, gift shop, so people can buy some balloons in order to get our money up. But it looks like that's a fairly good entrance for the exhibit. Uh, like I said, I like this uh, idea for an opening area. Obviously, we're going to have to retool the guest area now because it's so basic. It's just, oh, hey, we're going to have another one. And we got more vet research. So this is going very well. Hopefully, I'll have some more hogs I can throw online for other people to start their franchise soon, very, very soon, it looks like. Um, but yeah, it looks like a good first exhibit. I like this a lot, like I was saying, because it gives us, we can branch off kind of any way. I've got rooms for exhibits here. Uh, if I move the guest area, I can put an exhibit here. I can obviously kind of go around the uh, area that we put in for our workers in kind of a circle so that they're giving all, all the power. Because uh, you can see, let me just show you where the power kind of goes around the circle. So as long as the exhibits are touching that outer circle, we should be good. Um, we should be good with a lot of things, actually. Animal welfare. Animals should all be happy. Temps are good. Water. Yeah, water. So we are filtering the pool there. That's good. Buildings. La la la. Yeah, I shouldn't have any guests. Although I haven't gotten a security card yet. And the education. I went ahead, and in case you didn't know, notice, I put uh, two signages up. And then I just put a uh, educational box there and cranked it on high. So if you want to learn anything about warthogs, you are going to get a lot of information about warthogs. Uh, not too many guests have made it this way. But you can see everyone that goes this way is going into that viewing area. And um, if you're interested in how to make those little viewing areas, I cut it out here because it's going to be a long video. Just let me know in the comments below. I can start making like quick little um, shorter tutorials just showing you how to make those guys and how to slide them into your fences if that's what you want. Uh, let me go here. More vet research is complete. Woohoo! I know everything you need to know about Warhawks before this video is over. But anyway, I think that's where we're going to stop this episode of the Franchise Zoo today. Um, like I said, I will be trading off the baby warthogs if we have any in the near future. So if you want my warthogs, just let me know. I don't know if I can directly send them to you, but I'll let you know when I'm about to post them. And hopefully we can have some good trades with other people playing this game. Uh, hopefully we can make this a very vibrant community of uh, Planet Zoo. Because that's what we're going for. I want more Planet Zoo in the world. Anyway, I want to thank you for joining me today. If you like this, be sure to go ahead and just like it. Uh, if you want to follow this series or the other Planet Zoo, uh, non-online, the uh, Challenge Zoo that I'm making, you can go ahead and click that subscribe button and then click the bell to get the notifications. Uh, other than that, this is Zoo Tech Steve saying bye.